Looks good. So the next presentation is by Mr. Falker, and he's going to talk about KDE, KDE itinerary. So please give him a round of applause. Over yes. to you. Uh, thank you. Um, yeah, so I'm going to talk about uh, KDE itinerary or digital travel um, assistance. Um, what do we mean when we, when we say that? Uh, you probably know um, services like TripIt or um, some of the travel assistance features in Google Now. Um, they, they all more or less work the same, right? So they read your email, um, they find tickets, boarding passes, bookings, that kind of stuff in there. Um, they put it into your calendar or they uh, create a nice uh, timeline and then uh, guide you through that um, and give you real-time updates on, on delays and that kind of stuff. Um, all of that is available for free in the sense that you don't pay for it, uh, at least not by money, but um, with, your, with your data. Um, and how bad is that? Um, so the, the first thing that comes to mind is like the, the data you directly uh, leak to those services, right? So your name, your birthday, your credit card number, your passport number, that kind of stuff. Um, and maybe you're okay with that, with sharing that with those services. Um, but the thing people think less about um, is kind of the indirectly leaked data. Um, so if, um, if you and I travel to Brussels on the first weekend in February, um, that might be pure coincidence, right? But I guess um, for many of us, that isn't the first time that has happened, right? So two or three times, same destination, same time, that is no longer a coincidence, right? So if you have enough of that travel data, um, that actually tells you a lot on relations between people. So um, what you are interested in, who you work for, where your family lives, all that kind of stuff, right? Um, so in that point, giving your travel data to, to someone like Google is not just impacting yourself, but everyone else as well. So um, not ideal. Um, what do we do about that? So one approach might be um, let's just not use those services. Um, and that works uh, until you find yourself traveling in a foreign country where you don't speak any of the local languages uh, and then get introduced to their counterpart of Schienenersatzverkehr or Tarifzonenrandgebiet. Um, and then you really want some, some assistance, right? Um, so that brings us to another approach to deal with this. If we don't like something that, or if we don't like the available options, right, let's build one on our own. One on our own. Um, so let's have a look at uh, what this would take. Um, turns out the problem is actually more about data rather than about code. There's also quite some code necessary, but a lot of building blocks already exist. Um, the main challenge seems to be uh, getting the various pieces of data we need. Uh, and I grouped this into in three general categories. Um, first one is the, the personal data. So that is um, you booked a hotel or a train to a specific location. Um, that data usually comes to you in the form of, um, of emails or of PDF documents, um, or you find it on, on a website. Um, the second category of data is um, what I would call the, the static data. So that is uh, information on where exactly is a specific airport or in which time zone is that airport. Um, I come from Berlin, so their airports are actually static. In other parts of the world, people apparently manage to build new airports. So static here um, refers to 
kind of the, the release cycle of the software, right? So a few months at most. Uh, so that is data that is practical to, to ship for offline use. Um, and the third category is what I would call the dynamic data. So um, delay information, for example, or gate changes. So uh, extremely short-lived uh, information um, that you uh, need to query from some, some online service. So let's look at those three categories in a bit more detail. Um, fortunately, we are not the first one with those specific problems, right? Google built the same system, and they also needed to get their hands on those data. Um, and the way Google usually solves this is um, they define a standard and encourage everyone else to, to follow that. Uh, and that's what they did for the, uh, the booking data. Um, they came up with the schema.org data model, uh, which they also use for the search engine, but that contains um, like a, a structured annotations that they expect in emails uh, about your, your flight or your train and so on. Um, depending on where you live, um, that seems to be present in about 30 to 50% of booking related emails. Um, so that's a good starting point. Um, then, of course, you have random unstructured emails, so just meant for human consumption um, uh, that we have to deal with. Um, then for flights, there is um, uh, Apple uh, Wallet passes uh, as something that is fairly uh, popular. Um, and then there's barcodes. Uh, Backwards, I can probably fill an entire talk with um, on what you can extract from, from that as a kind of structured information, but not meant for our purpose. But so that's at least something to work with. Uh, for static data, uh, we also have quite some, some stuff to work with. Uh, most prominently, Wikidata. Um, so that is structured data of pretty much everything imaginable. Um, and OpenStreetMap uh, covering the, like the local specific parts. And also the time zone maps. So time zones is something really important for that use case. Um, areas where we still have some, some gaps, I would say, is um, uh, adding uh, vendor-specific station identifiers to Wikidata. That is, for example, necessary to, to match to barcode content. Uh, and then the whole problem of like indoor navigation and navigation to your specific seat on the train and, and those kind of information. Uh, and for dynamic data, um, again, Google did some groundwork there. They defined the uh, GTFS standards. Um, as an interface for public transport operators to feed that information to, to Google Maps. Um, but many of them luckily do that as, as open data. Um, so we can consume that by free software as well. And there's uh, two big free software implementations of, of such uh, journey querying services based on, on top of GTFS. Uh, that's Navitia and uh, Open Trip Planner. Um, so that's, uh, that's at least covering the, the train and bus part. Uh, then we have the Apple Wallet boarding passes again. They also have a built-in update API um, that's useful for, for gate changes, for example. Uh, but that has the disadvantage that it leaks user information, so not ideal. And then, of course, there's plenty of vendor-specific online APIs. Um, Many of them, unfortunately, not really compatible with free software or open data requirements. So you have some terms of conditions that aren't really compatible with our use cases, uh, or you need API keys that you're not allowed to, to publish, right? So uh, problems like this. Um, but that's the, the theory. So let's have a look at what we have actually built over the last two years. Um, the first component is the uh, K-itinerary data extraction library. 
Um, so that implements this schema.org data model for uh, flights, trains, buses, hotels, events. Um, and I'm forgetting one. Well, basically those, oh, restaurant reservations, that's the other one. Um, and it has an extraction system that can handle the uh, structured data. So if there's structured annotations in, in emails, it can consume that. Um, and it has uh, an unstructured extraction mechanism, both generically, and it has uh, support for like vendor-specific uh, scripts. Um, so for, I think, a bit more than 50 vendors where we where the generic approaches or the structured approaches don't work, um, you can write a small JavaScript that does the extraction for that specific vendor, and that's then a few lines of regular expressions or XPath queries. Um, the output of that is then augmented by uh, informations we, we draw from Wikidata. Uh, so that's uh, filling in time zones or uh, geo coordinates for, for stations and airports. Um, and that can consume basically all the data formats um, in which you might get these documents. Um, anything you find in an email, PDF, um, the Apple Wallet boarding passes, and so on. Um, if, you, if any one of you has seen um, the, uh, the Nextcloud talk from Jos earlier today, they showed the integration with, um, uh, with the itinerary extraction that's using exactly that system. Um, another building block we created is uh, the K Public Transport Library. So that's covering basically the dynamic data problem. Um, uh, giving you API for querying for uh, locations, uh, departures and arrivals at those locations, um, and journeys between locations. Um, this can talk to the two free software uh, services, uh, Navizia and um, Open Trip Planner, as well as to um, uh, a few proprietary uh, backends. And we have about 50 or so configurations for different services that then use any of those backends um, to, to actually get the data from. And the library picks the right service for the location you, you're looking at, and then uh, gives you the results for that. And of course, we have the, the actual um, uh, KDI itinerary application. Um, that's a mobile app giving you um, a timeline of your, of your trip um, that automatically groups the various uh, bits on your itinerary together. So that's my, my FOSTEM trip with li live weather report in between. Um, I can show you the, the boarding passes. Um, and uh, it uh, can pull you delay information for trains or uh, gate and platform changes. If you miss your train, it, it allows you to find an alternative connection to get to your destination. Um, having all the data available, it, uh, it provides you some statistics on how much you traveled in the last year. Um, so if you're watching out for your CO2 impact, for example, that gives you trends on if you're improving over the years. Um, one of my favorite features, because nobody else has it, is the power plug compatibility warning uh, powered by Wikidata. So, I mean, if you're traveling to the UK, you probably know they have a weird power plug, so, but some more normal countries like Switzerland or Italy, coming from Germany, also need an adapter, and I tend to forget that, so the app Seeing that I travel to those countries or through those countries reminds me to bring the, the corresponding adapter. Um, something that is uh, pretty new is um, an assistance feature to automatically fill the gaps in your itinerary. So I arrive at the main station in Brussels. I have my hotel somewhere. How do I get to the hotel? Um, it now suggested me to take the metro number two to wherever I needed to go. Um, so that's then actually moving from just managing data to actively supporting you on this. Uh, that's another brand new thing. That's the uh, 
train layout display, so it shows me where on the platform I need to go to find my reserved seat. Um, right, and then finally, how do we actually get the data into the app? For that, we have um, plugins for a number of different email applications, uh, starting in Kmail, of course, because that's where we came from. Um, so that shows you a nice, uh, nice to read banner on um, what it found in the email. Um, Nextcloud, you might have seen earlier today uh, doing something similar, um, released two weeks ago. The third one is Thunderbird. That isn't released yet, but uh, it's basically going to have the, the same functionality uh, available there as well. Um, and last but not least, we have the, the browser plugin, uh, basically doing the same for, for websites you're looking at. Um, Right, and uh, I'm done almost exactly in time. Uh, one last bit, um, forget about all the privacy stuff I said. We need test data to improve the data extraction, so <laughs> uh, please donate that. Uh, if you want to learn more about that, um, meet us in building K at the KDE stand uh, or at the next cloud stand around the corner. Thank you. To respect the time and the time delay we're having, if there are no burning questions, my advice is please uh, reach out to Falker and address the question in person, and we can move on to the next presentation. Thank you so much. <laughs>